Today we'll be finishing Chiori and trying her out in the new abyss. Since our actual Chiori is still level one, we have a little ways to go here, but let's see how far we can get her. She is from Inazuma, and I do just typically have a good reserve of like materials from the older areas. We do already need to head to the crafting station for some topaz fragments. I think that might be enough, but we'll probably have to transfer some as well. There's the third star and going up to level 60 now. This is probably where we have to do a bit of farming already. Never mind. <laughs> we definitely will need some more dendrobiums, but I should have them all in my world, so hopefully enough. There's the fourth star and level 70. So back up to raising mode at least, but yes, we need one more for the second to last star. Beep. Whew, finally finished. Okay, so we can go ahead and get the second to last star now. Add those books for level 80. Now we definitely have some farming to do. Unfortunately, there's only 54 now dendrobiums. We'll go fight Coppelia first. Do we get a three? Nope. If we get a three in the next two drops, we save one run. So hopefully that happens. Also, for those that are wondering, I still have not even C6 to my Ito. You better believe I'm going to make a dedicated video on that. <laughs> Although this new abyss. I'm pretty sure does favor Geo. I'm probably going to try and refrain from using Ito, or maybe we'll just use him, but still at C4. Get one shot. Almost. <laughs> okay. Come on, three. Come on. Yes. Okay. One more run regardless. But yeah, let's go ahead and grab all the current dendrobiums in my world, and we'll see what we can do for the other, like, five we'll be missing. Beep. No. Bro, where's the thing? The heck? I forgot how Inazuma works. Way over there, bro. Beep. And beep. We should have 54, actually. We have 53. We're missing one. If there is someone that sells them, they're not going to sell six instead of seven. <laughs> oh. Rocky coming in clutch with the message. Need anything for any Chara? Boom. Let's go. Going to go get my seven dendrobiums now. Beep, 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 beep. That should do it. Yes, we're good. While we're here with Rocky, we're also going to do the last Coppelia run as well. Although there's really not much to say when, when it comes to this boss fight. And there we go. We should be more or less done besides a trip to the crafting station. Six gold chunks and 23 big specters. We actually don't have quite as much as I thought we did because we still have to raise talents. Sucrose bonus. Come on, be nice. Pretty much exactly average. It's fine, though. At least not less than average. We got three golds from other golds. We'll probably just get the rest like this. We should be able to just make the other three now. Yes, indeed. Need. All right, we should be ready to finally get that last star, last XP books as well. And there she is, level 90, very cool. Step one finished. Step two is weapon. She has her signature. That's what we're going to leave her in. Obviously, this is God mode. I can't imagine there's anything better than it anyway for her. 20 death, 48 skill damage. The base stats are great. Artifacts, we are going to be sticking with Golden Troop. I think right now her skill damage is the most important, and this is how we get the most of it. So yeah, her build is pretty much done. Just a quick overview here. Uh, you know, we got some crit rate, crit damage on this flower. Mainly just death on the plume, decent amount of crit rate on the off piece sands, death percent, of course, geo damage on the goblet. Again, mainly just death, and then we do have to go a crit rate circlet because <laughs> we don't have much crit rate on substats. But I mean, it's a decent circlet, you know, we got, you know, 14 death, 20 crit damage. Overall stats are pretty balanced, actually. We got 2300 death, pretty close one to two ratio there. I was also optimizing my Ito a bit off screen and actually raised a pretty insane artifact. Started with four subs, only went to those two stats, so that was pretty amazing. But he's also looking pretty pretty good. We got 3,100 death, 79 crit to 191 crit damage. Crit damage is a little lower than usual, but I wanted him to crit consistently, so had to make some sacrifices somewhere. He does have a lot of death, though. Besides that, we're going to mostly just take a mono geo team with, like, Zhongli and Goro. I know we don't need Zhongli because Ito's bull does count as a geo construct, but honestly, since Goro's not a great healer, you know, some protection from his shield and res down would be good anyway. We could also try and make a Navia team work, but for that, I feel like we would need some reactions, get crystallized for her, and I feel like in this team, Chiori will shine a little brighter because Goro and Zhongli's buffs actually help her as well. Although I do think a team like this would work as well. Sien Yun's mostly there because she actually is a really good team white healer for, you know, pre-C6 Farina. This team would definitely be more for the benefit of Navia and less so Chiori, but we could start with it, I guess, just see how it goes and then maybe swap to the Ito team for floor 12. Anyway, we do have a new Abyss here, at least floor 11 and 12. 9 and 10 are same as always, but I think it would be good just to warm up with the team. Oh, wait. Navia does not have any um, geo constructs. <laughs> I do specifically remember saying Navia team not that good until C1 because of this issue. I also do need to get more used to pressing E to swap out to Navia instead of four. I mean, this team might just work better replacing Navia with Ito, especially my Ito, possibly in general as well. So yeah, let's give this a try. It's going to be really awkward. So we're going to do it like that and then uh, stop. Then we're going to get her burst. 
do some E's real quick. So, um, yeah. We'll do that and then swap to... Oh, I couldn't press E again? Oh, I may have accidentally pressed the normal attack button. Oh man, this is not going well. Oh my god, my muscle memory. I know I need to be pressing E, but... Okay, let's just try and take it slow. We have plenty of time. So we're going to, well, I guess, try and get, like, her burst back or something. All right, there we go. We can get Farina burst. Okay, now we're going to do CN Yun burst, get some healing in there. Uh, we're going to start with Chiori burst, I guess. Sure, why not? Then we're going to hold that. Go up there, press E again, swap out, do a plunge attack. Uh, now we can go into burst mode and I guess uh, just kill everyone. I wanted to do at least one plunge attack, but yeah, floor 9 and 10 didn't help at all. Floor 11 is new, we have a 75% geo damage bonus here. And what's really interesting is no target defense this time. We'll just do like a quick overview of Chamber 11. Like I don't feel like there's anything super threatening in Chamber 1, especially because there's not a target defense. Chamber 2 though, you know, we got the Consecrated Beasts coming back. They are notoriously difficult, maybe less so on Floor 11, but we'll see. We got one of these new enemies from the new area, this uh, green beast dude. As far as I remember, there's nothing insanely special about these guys. And then we got the Water Phantasms. Those are also pretty tough, but they are made of water, so you can get some pretty easy reactions on them. But since we do have a 75% Geo damage bonus, I think I am going to try my Mono Geo team here now. Usually for God Modes, I am putting a big focus on damage, but it's a little hard to see amongst everything else happening. I don't think we can just do like a Chiori Hyper Carry and try and pretend that she's a main DPS at C0. The side we choose doesn't seem to matter that much, so I'm just going to throw them in first half and go for like a Zhonglin Goro Bini Chiori team. Uh, it's not gonna be great, but I'm gonna see if we can sort of main DPS with her, and for second half we'll just take my general Nouvellet team, doesn't matter in this case. So Zhongli pretty much one-shot all the minions with his, uh, pillar, but, uh, uh, we do have her now. So, uh, you know, we're just going to do the Geo Infusion stuff. We are getting some, like, very quick attacks there, obviously Yunjin has her thing. Uh, do, do a little burst there for like 42. We're gonna reset the rotation and try and take a closer look at what her actual damage is doing. Uh, with keeping in mind, of course, that we do have a 75% Geo damage bonus here, I guess. So that did not critical, unfortunately. Let's check out her burst. Like 66k. Um, these guys are on pillars. We're gonna go back out to Zhongli and, uh, if we can, get, okay, get away from the pillar. There are, are a lot of dudes here, Jesus. It's just so annoying when you're too close to the pillars, you can't swap out. Assuming to a taller character because they would clip into it or whatever. Yeah, we don't have energy for like anyone. That's crazy. Let's go ahead and get her uh, two minions out. I mean, that was like a 60k right there. Not bad. All right, now we can start the whole rotation, I believe. So, going to actually try and see something this time. That would be nice. So, everyone's burst. Let's go and do her burst as well to start off with. Yeah, 73 there. What are we doing with, like, basics? All of our bursts are, like, gone. We're doing, like, I don't know, 14, 15k with basics. For a sword user, it's really not that bad, honestly. It's just unfortunate her Geo Infusion is very short. But, yeah, I mean, like... Still doing some solid damage. How are these Consecrated Beasts gonna go on my Nouvellet side? I imagine they're still gonna be easy because this is an incredibly overpowered team, but... Uh, it looks like we only get one at a time, which is... which can be kind of annoying, actually. Slightly easier, but also takes a bit longer as well. I'm not sure if I, uh, messed up my Nouvellet at one point, but he's not doing <laughs> a lot of damage. Alright, Chamber 3 now. We got these, uh, Water Bubbles dudes. Uh, we'll see if we can get everyone's burst real quick so here we go can do everything we'll just start with her burst as well oh unfortunately we shouldn't have gotten her doll out because now we don't even have a geo infusion we can get one now i mean yeah there are definitely huh you know what you know what's like super funny all of her talents are still level one i 1000 percent just forgot to raise her talents dude <laughs> um <laughs> Wow, she's actually doing a lot of damage then. <laughs> oh my god. I'm just gonna leave. I'm gonna restart floor 11. Oh my god, Mogak. Okay, um, honestly just going in a different order messed me up because I would usually do talents before build and... I don't know why I decided to do build first, and I just thought, okay, don't, done with build, ready to fight. She's going to be a lot more impressive now. I was wondering, like, damn, we have a 75% geo damage bonus, and, you know, her damage isn't bad, but I was expecting a bit more. Well, there you go. I'm glad the thought at least did come to me at one point, and again, we are going to raise her basic, because we were kind of trying to main DPS with her, but since we only have, like, four weekly boss mats, we're probably going to just leave her basic at six, and get the others to uh, eight. So we're just gonna take the same team and see if we spot a difference. I could just leave this whole thing out of the video and spare myself some embarrassment, but you know what? 
Nah. All right, here we go. So uh, we can start doing some bait. Oh yeah, now we're doing, honestly, not even that much more. Her ultimate, I think, did 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 six digits. And I just saw a normal attack for like 35, or that may have been her pet. Skill doing 88. Okay, there we go. Her ultimate hopefully hits those dudes. I didn't see. The pet is hitting for like 50k though. So that's pretty dang good. Again, 75% Geo damage bonus. We'll see what it is in floor 12. Yeah, 117 burst there. Her normals actually aren't doing that much more. Her burst there is a 113. Honestly, quite good. I imagine even without the Geo bonus, we could still get like at least 80k burst or something. Boom, 116 on those guys. It's actually very consistent so far. And yeah, the normals are doing between 15 and 20k, it looks like. And her pets are doing around 50 as well. Although, I guess we aren't getting the other part of the golden troop proc, so she would probably be better served in a different artifact set when I'm trying to main DPS with her, but we're just kind of trying to see her main DPS potential at C0. But yeah, floor 12, we got four different bosses here. Uh, in chamber three, a, a boss on each side. I know there are the arithmetic enhancer mechs, which are just common enemies, but the veteran, I don't know. There could be a bunch of them in second half. I guess we'll see. The other bosses we've seen multiple times before, Terror Shroom, Mechanical Array. None of them have super special things with them, honestly, besides resistances. Like Dendro's bad for Terror Shroom, Physical for the Mechanical Array, and Cryo and Animo for these guys. The husks hate when they attack shields, so prefer Probably no shielder in first half. And yeah, besides that, nothing insane. I am quite curious about what's going on in second half of chamber three though. I do wanna do essentially a test first, just to see Chiori's damage without the 75% geo damage buff, honestly. Okay, here it might be a little hard to see because the enemies we're starting off with are kind of annoying. Let's just see, um, 74. I mean, that's still good though, you know? Not like insane main DPS burst or anything, but like it's definitely not bad. 61k for skill and her pets are doing like 30, 34k each, I think. Unfortunately, I still don't think we're going to have super good time here because uh, we're about a minute and a half in already with uh, two enemies left. I mean, we're honestly not doing that bad considering we don't have a real DPS in this team. Assuming this isn't like a super easy side compared to the side we have to fight next, which is Honestly, Jade Plume, so I kind of doubt it's going to be that hard. But yeah, I don't think Ganyu can solo this, so we're going to leave. We probably do have to go second half with the Chiori team because of these uh, husks here. I am pretty worried about them. Even without a Geo Shielder, we'd have to be super careful with not, you know, getting crystallized shields either. So we're not going to go full Mono Geo. We are going to throw Binny in there for his 1000 attack. I think Binny overall will provide more damage than Zhongli's res reduction. It's just a matter of if we can survive well enough without a shield. Pyro, Cryo, and Animo are kind of out for DPSs on first half. Could probably do my Shogun team, but I really want Benny for that. Hyperbloom would probably also work well, but I'm just gonna go with my good old Nouvellet team because I'm used to it. So how fast can these guys clear? Oh, my Nouvellet is hurting quite bad right now. Yeah, not too bad, a little under a minute, like 55 seconds. Since we only have Jade Plume here, I do kind of imagine that was the harder side, so we'll try and keep an eye on uh, Chiori's damage as well, of course. And yeah, we got a 53k there. It's obviously not quite as much, I guess. Did we swap right this time? It felt like she just... Maybe it's because I was spamming E, so it just kind of worked out anyway. Um, Ito team here. I mean, she's still doing like 30k, I think, with, with her pets there. Not anymore, because maybe Goro's buff ran out. But um, yeah, not bad overall, actually. 68k there. Oh, yes. Okay, I I'm just going to be spamming E. Oh, Jade Plume died way too fast. But yeah, if you just spam E you're gonna automatically swap out. Moving on to stage two now, I'm glad we have Kazuha because there's a bunch of specters here. Uh, oh, there are actually quite a lot of enemies and then we have these guys to deal with. Yeah, this definitely isn't going as well as it could have, but I mean, first try here. Kind of wasn't exactly sure what to expect, but I think we are still making good time. So we're probably just gonna save bursts now. Yeah, I think we still have like two minutes. Perpetual Mechanical Array is definitely tougher than Jade Plume, in my experience. All right, we do have everyone's ultimate now, so we should be able to get some decent damage on him. We'll go ahead and do that and start doing some charge attacks here. He will be disabled pretty soon, though, I think, before this burst is over, I would imagine. Yes, we still got about a minute, so it's going not bad, not horrible. Why did this dude go way over there? That was dumb. All right, we're going to go ahead and burst. Forget it. Mechanical Array is currently disabled, so we should be able to take care of it right now. Okay, 50 seconds remaining. Definitely not 
as big of a deal as I thought it would be. So, chamber three. Yeah, we do have the uh, Coppelia boss here. This is nothing strange, nothing out of the ordinary. We will see what happens with that other boss, though. I honestly couldn't even find it on the Genshin Wiki, so it might be a special thing specifically for this abyss. Yeah, we probably could have done this faster, actually. I just recharged everyone's burst, but they, like, had so little HP left that I could have just probably did a couple more Nuvalettis. But anyway, we still have, I think, two minutes here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I am not, I'm not familiar with whatever this thing is. Oh, he has a Geo Shield, though. Okay. Definitely Geo was the right call here. Now his shield is gone, so we're gonna go to town? Does does this dude actually attack or- Oh yeah, he does. He's doing some big shockwaves here. I'm gonna just ignore them. You probably could jump over them or something, but we have Benny here healing us. Oh, and now he's like throwing rocks at us. Okay, I see. His Geo shield is back with a pretty much full Geo team. It goes away so fast again, so I didn't even need to do that. We still had over a minute. Basically perfect team. That Geo Shield does look strong though. Like maybe Zhongli alone would be enough or something, but I'm glad we had a pretty much full Geo team. So usually I would call the showcase finished after the Abyss, but I do want to get a better idea about what her E is actually doing and also how I would actually use her. So how I kind of see Chiori is almost like Albedo 2. I mean, that is at least a little bit accurate. They both are off-field geo damage sub DPSs. I think the main difference is two things. Albedo has a radius where he plants his flower, and in some situations that flower can get destroyed, whereas Chiori's pets have basically infinite range, they can't be destroyed, and they have 100% uptime. Albedo's flower, of course, also has 100% uptime, but not those other things. Albedo may generally be more universal because he doesn't need a second Geo to fully utilize his kit, whereas Chiori kind of does, even at C1. I guess we can do a sort of rough comparison over on Masanori. This will give us a good chance to really just look at Chiori's damage and see how it compares to Albedo. So we are going to have this as controlled as possible here. Basically, what we're going to do is get a Zhongli shield. Spam some E's with Chiori, swap back out, and just start doing some normal attacks with uh, Zhongli here. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, we're we're getting like 23k for the uh, little little dudes there. We will eventually swap out back to Chiori once her pets expire, which is now. So here we go. We're going to do that again. Get another E with Zhongli, though we didn't get a shield this time, but he died anyway. I didn't see the exact time Masanori died, but we're gonna run it three times and just take the average. So just doing the same thing, you know, to account for variabilities. But yeah, his first HP bar is gone in about 10 seconds, so that's already some sort of baseline there. Uh, and then we're gonna go and swap back out to, to, to a Chiori, because I know we have to refresh that real quick. And uh, we'll get another Zhongli shield as soon as we can. Okay, the cool thing with comparing Chiori to Albedo is that they're both sword users, they're both Geo, and they both need the same stats. So we can basically just swap everything. I'm going to give him her signature weapon, her full artifact set. So outside of the base stats they start with, they're going to be almost identical. In fact, I'm going to write it down. 23, 29 def, 81, 174. Okay. And for those that are wondering, we were normal attacking with Zhongli because we'll have to do that for Albedo. Otherwise, his off-field damage won't even trigger. So in the same exact weapon and artifact set, uh, we actually have 200 less def and 20 less crit rate because I believe Chiori gets crit rate on Ascension. I think we do have some extra Geo damage bonus though because that's what Albedo gets on Ascension. But all right, here we go. We're just gonna try the same thing. Getting a shield, throwing a Z down, swapping back out to uh, Zhongli and doing some normal attacks. Okay. Oh, oh wow. That was, that's a, oh. That's so much different than I thought it would be. I mean, we're, it's not perfectly apples to apples. We don't need to do anything else though. Like, yeah, he's not critically all the time, but that is an inherent thing with Albedo that he has 20 less crit rate, you know? It took us like 35 seconds. Yeah, so she's not Albedo 2, she's like Albedo 4. This is, of course, just speaking on off-field damage. Chiori does appear to be miles ahead of Albedo. Albedo does have one thing Chiori doesn't, and that is a 125 EM bonus, which can definitely be helpful in some teams. Chiori doesn't really provide any buffs, she is like pure off-field damage. And to be fair, the comparison is a little more exaggerated than it seems, because when we swap out, we do get this tailor-made stuff, so we get a couple of these stronger attacks, so she does a bit more burst damage out of the gate. So at the end of the day, I would say, Albedo and Chiori are very similar at C0, 
as you get the constellations up, they do branch out into different roles. Shiori becoming more and more of an off-field DPS and finally a main DPS at C6, with Albedo becoming more and more of a buffer for the rest of your team. That being said, when I do just need some off-field Geo damage, I would use Shiori over Albedo when they're both C0. I am still a little disappointed you need a construct until C1. I feel like that shouldn't have really been the case, but eh. Let me know what you think in the comments down below though. Thanks. As always for watching, and until next time.